What's going on YouTube? Back with another video. Today I just kind of wanted to go over two particular cassettes that I was interested in as I do this particular bike build. Uh, I played around with both of these and I found one at a better at a better uh, price and so I'm going with um, with that one but I kind of want to do a comparison and show you an install on an actual bike rim hub. Um, so today I'm going to be comparing the Shimano uh, 12 speed cassette. This is the SLX, which I've actually taken out of the box, but it's not been open as of yet. And I also have the Shimano 12 speed XT, which I'm not going to pick up because this one doesn't have that plastic mold that kind of um, puts the keeps the pieces in place so this will actually all come apart but I'll talk about that in just a second as well now when I first started looking at which route I was gonna go with this build um, I knew I wanted Shimano and the reason why I wanted Shimano was because I had SRAM on uh, two of my other bikes I had it on the Nashiki Colorado and I've also had it on the uh, specialized epic um, I also had it on the Specialized Epic full suspension bike. And I believe one was an NX and the other was a GX. And not going to complain about either or. I think both of them did well for what they served their purposes for. But once I got the Stump Jumper and tried out and tested the Shimano, uh, 11 speed cassette on that one and the Shimano brakes and the Shimano shifter and chain and derailleur complete night and day difference when it comes to performance so I'm sticking with Shimano because of that um, and when comparing these two cassettes both of these are 12 speed cassettes both of these are also the 1045 uh, cassettes so these are not the 1051, these are the 1045s, and both of them are 1045s. And the only difference between these particular two cassettes are on the SLX, you have uh, one cog that is aluminum, the rest are steel, and you can see that in the picture. It's just that last cog in the back. I'm sorry. You can uh, actually, let me adjust it. You can actually see in the video, um, in this, in this, you can actually see that only one cog is aluminum, and that's that last cog in the back. The rest are steel. In the XT version of this, you have your last two cogs are aluminum. Those are the ones that are in black, and the rest are steel. Other than that, they are the exact same. So the only difference is this one cog that is aluminum compared to this one being steel. Everything else is exactly the same. So when I first ordered one of these, I went with the XT, but once I found out that there was only uh, one cog aluminum difference between the two, I actually sent the XT back. Then I bought the SLX, but the SLX um, was $50 cheaper. And I think I've seen different reports of the weight between these two. And from my understanding, you're saving anywhere from 50 to 60 grams of weight by going with the XT. So if that's the case, um, you know, it is what it is. They don't feel too much different to me once I, uh, you know, pick both of them up. And I did take this one out of the plastic to, to feel the difference. But maybe I just can't feel it because it's that light. We're talking about grams. So, um, you know, some people think if they save up to a dollar a gram, it's worth it. So if you believe in that theory, then... The um, the XT may be I'm sorry the XT may be the one that you want to go with, but you know if it's 50 grams isn't that much and you want to save 50 bucks then I would go with the SLX. I was able to find this one slightly used for only 60 dollars, so I'm going to send the SLX back and I'm going to keep the XT. Other than that, there is no difference between these two uh, cassettes. And this one, the model number on the SLX is the CSM7100 and the XT is the M8100 and um, that's the difference between the two 
uh, when it comes to that. Now, that being said, I'm gonna put the SLX away and I wanna show you guys, if you were to get one of these cassettes, how to do the actual install on it. Now, the easiest way to do this is once you get these out of the box, and I'll show you on the SLX. In the back of it, there is a plastic, when you get these, if you buy them brand new, there's a plastic piece that you'll see um, in the back, and this is what you can use as a guide to put on the actual hub of the bike. So I could literally just place this in there and what ends up happening is the hub is going to push that plastic piece out and then the cassette just falls onto the hub. So that's the easiest way to do it. But if you were to buy one used or if you open it and don't realize, you know, what you're doing, what's going to happen is these first five cogs end up coming off and there's spacers in between. Now I'm going to take these off just to show you for demonstration purposes. And it took me a while to actually figure these out on how to place these on there. So the good thing is, is that there's really only one way to do this when you put this on. And so um, everything lines up the way that it's supposed to line up. So when you look at the actual design, you'll see where everything is supposed to line up on the actual hub. And it's only going to go in place if it's the right fit. So it's not even going to go in there. It's not even going to slide down if it's not set up properly. So, for example, when I put the first, let me see, how many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cogs on. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven cogs on. It's going to go on perfectly without a problem. These are where things get a little bit interesting is when you start to place the additional five on there and so um, I've kind of went through the manual even though they don't come with the manual they come with a actual UPC I'm sorry yeah a UPC QPC code where you have to click on and actually go online to download download the manual but I can save you guys a little bit of time from doing that so the first thing we're going to want to do is put on the this is the one two three four this is the largest cog out of the five that come apart. We're gonna put this one on first. And again, you're gonna see the indentures in here. And when you see these indentures, you'll pretty much be able to line up everything the way that it's supposed to go because there's no other way that it can go. Um, if you're kind of confused as far as which side is up or which side is down, Anything with any numbers on it or anything with any type of lettering on it is going to be face up. So on the back side of these, there should be nothing, no type of writing, no type of anything. Um, you can see right here, uh, I, don't, I can't really read it, but there's some type of lettering or numbering right here at the top. And so that's going to let me know that uh, this is the face up. So I'm just going to align these again. There's only one possible way that it can go. And once I put that in, then it's then it's in there. So there's no other way that you can put these cogs on without it going into the right place. Next thing you need to know is, is that it comes with two spacers for these five loose cogs. The thickest spacer is going to go on after you put the first loose cog on. So once you put the largest loose cog on first, you then put the largest uh, spacer on top of that and then you will have your next cog to go in place so again I'm going to look for the number which you will see the number right here that means that's going to go face up and again you're going to see the indentions and the indentions will actually show you where this is supposed to go on the hub Okay, once that's in place, you're good to go. Next, you'll have a thin, very thin spacer. This is your second spacer and your last spacer. You put that on top of that one. Then I go with the third largest cog, 
And again, I find my number, which is on this one right here. So I know that this is going to be the face up. And again, I look at my indentures. I see where it's supposed to go, put it in place. We're good to go there. And then you have your last two. Now, here's the thing about the smallest, the next, the smallest cog, these last two cogs, right? So with these, the way that you know that they're lined up, there is a dot on the first, which is the smallest cog. There's a dot right there. And then behind it, there is a dot on the second cog right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right, right there. You align those two dots together. One should be on top of the other. And actually, it's the only way that really both of these cogs can fit within each other. Um, but once they are lined up, they will fit into one another. I then have to align, and this is kind of where it gets weird because both of these can move kind of easily. Then I have to align that second largest cog, the back one, has to align the way all of the other loose cogs did. So I find that indentured spot and that's where it's going to go. And it's only really one way to do it. But the thing is, is about this one, you really have to make sure that it's flush and that it's on correctly. Because if not, you're going to have problems. And you can kind of just turn it to see when it just falls in place. There it is. You want to make sure, like I saw it just now, but this second one is, is tricky. There it is. But once it goes in, You'll know it because you'll feel it and you'll see that it's completely flush. Um, what I like to do is just still check on top to make sure that both of those dots are aligned, which here's the first dot. And then right underneath it is the second dot. So they are good to go. And then you have your top screw, which I'm just going to lightly screw in by hand, should be able to catch it and actually start to lock in place. Hold on just for a second. You can just kind of push down a little while you tighten it and it should start to lock in place. Yeah. They're not coming out, so I kind of screwed it in enough to see that. Now, I just kind of want to show you guys, I want to show you guys the actual side view of this, just so you can see how flush this is. you'll see in there that there are no warps. There's no larger or smaller spaces than any other spacing. Everything looks good. Let me just do a thorough check right quick. Yep. Everything is good. So. That's just a quick overview of actually how to install this. It does, as you can see, how quickly I just did it. Once you get it down packed, I mean, you can put this on in, in a few minutes and you're, and you're good to go. But you've got to make sure that everything is lined up correctly. And for those top two cogs, just be very careful because you can't accidentally end up placing those in incorrectly um, if you're not careful. So. Other than that, guys, I just wanted to compare the two cassettes. And as I build the bike 
and put more parts on. I'll show you um, all the other parts that I'm putting on and then kind of give you an update on everything else once uh, things become complete. So I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.